Hi everyone, welcome to episode 1 of the world of anime. Before I get started, if you don't have a solid grasp of what anime is and encompasses, then I highly recommend you start with episode 0. You can visit that with the eye on the top right of your screen, or in the description down below. Anyways, in this episode I'll give you an overview of anime genres. That way you'll have a much better idea of where you should start if you're interested in watching anime. I'll give some specific show recommendations in episode 2, but watching this video first should help you to give you some more context for that one. Alright, let's get started. Take a look at this chart by a Reddit user whose name is on screen. This is a chart of the most popular anime combinations based off of data from my anime list. My anime list, often abbreviated as MAL, is one of many anime lists that catalogs information about anime, but I'll likely go more in depth on that topic in another episode. Anyways, you can see that a lot, if not most of these topics, like action, adventure, comedy, and romance, aren't necessarily unique to anime. Other items on this list are more like topics than genres. Anime tagged with dementia, for example, probably have at least one character that has dementia, and an anime tagged with vampire usually might just include a vampire character. Let's get into the anime exclusive genres though, starting with shonen. Shonen, usually used to mean boy, refers to series geared towards younger, usually male audiences, and specifically younger teens. Anime like Naruto, Dragon Ball, My Hero Academia, One Piece, and Bleach exemplify this genre. Traditionally, shonen anime feature young male heroes who go on some sort of an adventure that involves fighting and action. They also often feature gratuitous fanservice. If you don't know what fanservice means in the context of anime, to put it delicately, it usually means that they will be female or occasionally male characters who leave little to the imagination with their clothing or actions. For these reasons, shonen anime is generally the most popular genre of anime. The ever-popular My Hero Academia, or Boku no Hero Academia, has become the rising star of shonen anime within the past few years. It excels at getting you invested into the plot, playing up the drama with great animation and music. The sports anime genre also often overlaps with shonen, usually featuring teams of boys playing sports like basketball in Kuroko no Basket, or volleyball as in Haikyuu. Of course, the genre isn't limited to solely male team sports. Tihaya Furu, for example, is a fairly popular female-led sports anime focusing on a Japanese card game. Sorry if I pronounce anything wrong, by the way. Now it's time for a detour into the land of Slice of Life. Slice of Life, sometimes unfortunately abbreviated as SOL, is usually accompanied by other genres, but its name is pretty literal. It means that you're seeing a slice of someone's life. You'll often see somewhat relatable situations and settings that you might see in your own life, from going to school in a romance like Origairu, to working in a cafe in a comedy like Blend S, which you may have seen a bit because of this meme a few years ago. To traveling the world in the always upbeat and totally normal Kino's journey. Granted, something like Kino's journey occurs in a world very different from ours, Slice of Life anime doesn't have to be normal to us. Adjacent to Slice of Life are two genres not listed on my anime list, Moe and Cute Girls Doing Cute Things, or CGDCT for short. According to Anime News Network, Moe is a term used to describe characters that call forth a desire to protect and nurture them. In other words, it means cute and it usually describes female characters. Cute Girls Doing Cute Things is usually about Moe girls who do pretty much anything, usually in the form of a Slice of Life anime. They're definitely not for everyone, but they can be pretty relaxing. One of my favorites is Koisuru Asteroid, an anime that's literally just a bunch of girls doing astronomy and geology. That one actually can be quite educational at times, so moe anime fans won't necessarily always enjoy it, but I personally did. A more popular example of cute girls doing cute things is New Game. This is a moe cute girls doing cute things slice of life comedy that could be jokingly summed up as a bunch of lesbian game developers make a game together. That's it. That's the entire show. It's great, and I recommend that you watch it if you decide you want to check on anime within those previously mentioned genres, Moe, Cute Girls Doing Cute Things, or Slice of Life. Let's shift to a completely different type of anime that, bafflingly, also isn't listed on my anime list. Isekai. Isekai literally means different world, and it refers to anime where the protagonist is transported to another world. Video game anime are sort of a subcategory of isekai. You may have heard of Sword Art Online, which is somehow considered one of the best and worst anime of all time depending on who you ask. If you haven't, it's basically about an edgy teenager who tries out a VR game, gets trapped in the game with everyone else, and needs to survive and beat the game because if he dies in the game, he dies in real life. Isekai usually have fantasy settings, and they can be very wholesome or very dark. Ascendance of a Bookworm, for example, is an anime about somebody obsessed with books who dies in an accident involving books and gets reincarnated as a five-year-old girl in the medieval era who remains obsessed with books and wants to read. I never got around to watching much of that myself, so sorry if my description was a little bit inaccurate. Another, more popular isekai is ReZero, an anime about a suffering teenager who gets killed and then stuck in a time loop. I won't get too much into memes with this video because I'll cover those elsewhere, but you may hear the term getting isekai'd, which usually refers to how a lot of isekai anime start. Dying, often by means of getting hit by a moving vehicle, and then being sent to another world. 
I should briefly mention, of course, that comedy is its own genre as well. I'll give proper recommendations in the next video, but I should at least mention Konosuba, an anime for people who've seen a lot of isekais. Konosuba parodies common isekai tropes, as with a lot of comedy anime. For example, the main character dies by getting hit by a truck, but we later learn that his death wasn't exactly in typical isekai fashion. Now, onto something different, but again. The seinen genre, literally translated as youth, consists of anime targeted more towards men from their late teens onwards. They can range from being dark psychological horror like Tokyo Ghoul and Elfin Lied, to family-friendly and light-hearted rom-coms like Kaguya-sama Love is War. It's usually used to refer to the former, though. On a related note, Jose is often considered the counterpart to seinen. Just like seinen, this adjective can range a wide variety of anime, but I don't personally know much about any, if any, Jose, so I won't list any examples here. Next up is shoujo, which is somewhat of a counterpart to shonen. While shonen is aimed at teen boys, shoujo is aimed at teen girls. But shoujo isn't just about the demographic. Shoujo anime usually have a focus on romance and friendship. Or in High School Host Club, for example, is a 2006 anime that, when boiled down, actually explores gender identity and sexuality, according to my friend at least. Fruits Basket is another one of the more popular shoujo anime and manga. It's a romance comedy drama slice of life that focuses on Toru Honda, who stumbles across the Somas, a family where a subset of the characters turn into zodiac animals upon being hugged by a member of the opposite sex. It's definitely as light as it sounds, all the time, nothing bad can ever happen. Shoujo's often have a stereotypically intricate art style that does its best to make everyone look overly pretty, so I've put up a parody of it from Kageya-sama Love is War in the background so you get an idea of what that looks like. Next up is Magical Girls, or Maho Shoujo in Japanese. Again, this isn't a genre on my anime list for some reason. This is perhaps one of the most stereotypically anime genres. Magical Girl anime usually involve a group of girls who have or gain magical powers. The most identifiable part of this genre is the Magical Girl transformation. I'll put a few on screen as I continue talking. There is such a thing as a Magical Girl transformation in a non-Magical Girl anime, see the controversial movie Fireworks for an example of that, but there really isn't a lot to say about that. Again, I'll talk about where to start with anime in the next episode, but one of my best friends absolutely loves Princess Tutu. Princess Tutu is a surprisingly good early 2000s anime that's hard to sum up, but its English dub has some really, often unintentionally, funny moments. Here are just a couple. How many times must I tell you? Why? Why am I so obsessed with books? Once upon a time, there was a man who died. Anyways, I bring this one up because it's a Magical Girl anime that doesn't really seem like one on the surface. It feels like calling it a Magical Girl anime is a technicality. Maho Shoujo Madoka Magica, also known as Puella Magi Madoka Magica, is an anime I won't say much about, but it's a dark take on the Magical Girl genre, and it definitely is not as good for younger audiences as something like Princess Tutu or Cardcaptor Sakura. Next up on the list of topics to cover is mecha anime. Mecha anime usually involves some sort of a group of random people who pilot giant mechs to fight off an evil force. Neon Genesis Evangelion might be the most famous mecha anime, because it's an older anime that someone inspired future anime. Other top mecha anime, according to my anime list, include Code Geass, Tengen Toppa Gurren Lagann, and Darling in the Franks. I won't get into any of these in particular because I personally haven't watched through any of them, but I'll note that one of the more common tropes in mecha anime involves machines transforming and combining with others. You've probably seen an example of this if you've ever watched Voltron. I should also just quickly mention that Yaoi, or BL, Boys Love, uh, is a genre of anime showing romance between men. Yuri, similarly, translates to Lily, but is actually Girls Love, the female counterpart to Yaoi. Nowadays, Yuri is kind of a catch-all term, and Girls Love and Shoujo Ai aren't used really as much. I might go more in-depth on ecchi anime, Shonen Ai, and Shoujo Ai, and anime that I definitely cannot talk about without getting demonetized in an age-restricted bonus video, which would be episode 1.1, and I'll put that next in this playlist if I do make the video. If you can't watch it, you're really not missing much, and I'll see you in episode 2. One last thing, I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button so that you can see future videos. Also, let me know what you think about this series, and if there are any videos you want to see in the comments down below. That's also the place where you should let me know if you wanted to see a video on those more adult topics. Otherwise, you can tap on the playlist on screen right now to see all the videos in the series, or tap the video on the right to just go to the next one. Thanks for watching.